When you think of the suburbs, you might think boring. The suburbs are often associated with cookie cutter homes. The particular area in the Chicago suburbs in which I spent many years had few historical remnants. It was mostly new construction and not even a traditional main street or square. It was mostly residential blocks, echoing other residential blocks, and big box stores. Oh, and a mall shaped like a dollar sign. It's true. Oh, we did have the sculpture part. It may have seemed that it has been that way always, but just a hop, skip, and a jump away from the cookie gutter homes that surrounded me in my part of Lake County was... Well, actually a different set of cookie cutter homes. But they were in a place where residents and their families had served in or had been a part of the Spanish-American and Philippine-American wars around 1900, World Wars I and II, the Korean and Vietnamese wars, as well as Desert Shield and Desert Storm in the 1990s. Early in the Cold War, Fort Sheridan had supplied Nike anti-aircraft systems that were being marketed across the globe. But much earlier, and much closer to the home front, residents here had been involved in the reason for the Fort Sheridan District's existence in the first place, the labor strikes in Chicago in the late 1800s that resonated throughout and were covered across the United States. Fort Sheridan was a U.S. military post for over a century, from 1887 to 1993. But how did Fort Sheridan even come to be here, in the middle of the Midwest, in the Chicago suburbs, in the first place? Let's go back to those labor strikes. By the 1870s, Chicago's population had grown to 300,000. It was the fifth largest city in the U.S., or the fourth from today's point of view, as until 1899, New York and Brooklyn were separate cities. But in 1871, the Great Chicago Fire left tens of thousands of people homeless. The mayor declared martial law and put General Philip Sheridan, of Civil War fame, in charge. While Sheridan did help restore order, unrest would continue, including major strikes such as the Great Railway Strike of 1877 and the Haymarket Riot of 1886. Members of the Commercial Club, a group of prominent businessmen landowners, including Marshall Field, who founded the department store chain, and George Pullman, who monopolized the luxury sleeping car industry, were worried about what was going on in Chicago and wanted to protect their interests as well as the city. So they purchased over 600 acres of lakefront land near Highwood, Illinois, and donated it to the government with the understanding that it would be dedicated to a military post originally named Camp Highwood. By the way, it's no coincidence that Pullman was a part of this club and that he wanted the army to be here. In the Pullman strike of 1894, employees would be rebelling against his policies. Don't worry. These forested highwood ravines within the bluffs of Lake Michigan made this area a secure location for an army post. Landscape designer O.C. Simons fit most of the base's center within the borders of these two largest ravines, with four loops of buildings following the curves of some of the smaller ravines. Brigadier General Hollibird hired an architecture firm that happened to share his name the fledgling Holliburton Roche, his son's firm. Holliburton Roche would later be known for some of the first skyscrapers, an architectural innovation in which Chicago and the firm played a key role. A tall stride in that direction, though, was their commission to design the first 66 buildings of Fort Sheridan. They created a visually cohesive base, showing an affinity for the Richardsonian Romanesque style, with their use of arched, recessed windows and doorways. They used brick made of yellow clay found in the local bluffs. Your rank in the army was, among other things, reflected in the architecture of your sleeping quarters. Infantry soldiers lived in their hundreds in the main barracks, and for higher ranking officers, within the Holliburton Roche design buildings, you got to have a single family home. If you were a lieutenant, you got a single third floor window, while if you were a captain, you got a double and a larger version of that home. But if you were the post commander, then you and your family got to have a Queen Anne style home with turrets and fancy trim. Fort Sheridan was designated a National Historic Landmark in 1984, both because of the military history that had taken place there and because of its architectural qualities. In large part, Fort Sheridan was decommissioned in 1993 
though about 90 acres has been retained by the Army. In interviews for this research, I spoke to people who passed through Fort Sheridan in the years following its closure, who experienced it as a kind of ghost town. The rest was sold to developers in the 90s, after which sectors began being converted into a residential area, and what had been military quarters became civilian living spaces. Most buildings' masonry exteriors were preserved, while being completely refurbished from the inside to fit modern needs. Besides living in a former commander's residence, or the former stables, for example. You could live in a condo in the former infantry drill hall. You could live in the former bakery. In a former fire station. You could live in the former armory, the former cannon garage. You could live in a former veterinary hospital for cavalry horses. Check out this crane hook that winched the bales up to the hayloft. When the military began putting their horses out to pasture, this was turned into a post office. Or maybe you'd like to have your kids study music in a former military prison. Well, in fact, it was a guardhouse with a jail. But the verdict remains that if you want to become professional, you got to put in the time. Speaking of time, I'd spent years making assumptions about my general region of suburbia, but just look at what first impressions can give way to. This is only an introduction. There is so much more to be said about this enclave with a very layered history, here in the middle of the Calm suburbs, in the middle of the Midwest. <laughs>